Hey, what's up everybody? This is CLS All-in-One. In today's video, I'll show you how to determine if your water pump is bad in a Ford Explorer years 2012 through 2019 with a 3.5 liter engine. And this same type of water pump can also be found in numerous other vehicles with the 3.5 and 3.7 liter engines, such as the Ford Edge, Flex, Taurus, Police Interceptors, and a couple Lincoln models as well. So if you happen to have a vehicle, such as I just mentioned, with a leak in the right front under the vehicle just below the AC compressor that is orange or possibly yellow in color, this will more than likely be an antifreeze coolant leak, which could be leaking from a bad water pump, which are designed to last right around 100,000 miles. And this 2014 Ford Explorer happens to have right around 115,000 miles. To determine whether or not the water pump is indeed bad, first off, you'll want to take a look under your vehicle and make sure you're wearing some eye protection. Then locate the AC compressor, which is right next to the oil filter, and check for leaks. If you happen to have a coolant leak in this area circled here, this is usually a strong indicator that the water pump is going bad, which unfortunately is very bad news because this engine has an internal water pump it requires an extensive amount of work to replace and usually costs anywhere from $2,000 to $4,000 for a mechanic shop to repair. Now before determining this is the water pump for certain, there's a couple more places you can check that could cause a coolant leak. Located on the top side of the engine on the right wheel well is the coolant fill tank, which has a larger feed tube running off the bottom and an overflow tube running off the top. If one of these lines happens to have a leak that is spraying or dripping down on the right side of the engine, this could potentially be the issue. These lines can be inspected very easily just by lifting the top engine cover. And if there's a leak present, it should be pretty obvious and easy to see. But unfortunately in my case, these lines are both bone dry, so it looks like my water pump is indeed the issue and it needs replaced. Most of the Ford 3.5 and 3.7 liter engines have a transverse engine layout, meaning the engine lays sideways. So because of this, the water pump is actually located on the right side of the engine. Here are some pictures of a pulled engine to help explain where the water pump is located and a summary of the amount of work that is involved as well. So the water pump on this engine is located on the right side underneath the timing chain cover and this area is circled red. So the engine does not need to be pulled from the car but there is a major amount of work involved to get to the water pump. First off, the engine cover, fuel assembly, air filter box, and valve covers will all need to be removed from the top of the engine. Then, pretty much everything on the right side of the engine will need to be stripped, including the right engine mount, which requires the engine to be supported with a jack or hoist. Then, after all that, the timing chain cover will need to be removed, which will then give you access to the water pump, but the timing chain will have to be loosened first because the pump is chain driven by the timing chain. And here is a quick explanation of what happens when this water pump starts going bad. Most vehicle water pumps have a weep hole that will leak coolant when the pump starts to go bad. The weep hole location on this pump is shown here with the yellow arrow. Now since this water pump is mounted inside the timing chain compartment area, you cannot see the water pump leaking directly. Instead, what happens is it starts leaking inside this compartment. Then it eventually leaks out to a weep hole in the bottom right corner of this compartment, which then leaks to the bottom of the engine as shown here. So a job like this requires quite a bit of mechanical knowledge, determination, and a lot of tools. So if you do not feel confident in your mechanical abilities, this is a job that should probably be handled by a certified trusted mechanic, but be prepared because this will not be cheap. For those of you who are interested in learning more about how to do this on your own, there is numerous online videos on YouTube that can walk you through this process on these engines. And I will also be posting a follow-up how-to video on this process of changing this water pump here in the near future. And for those of you wondering how long you can drive with a damaged water pump like this, really, it's just not a good idea to even chance it. Because if the water pump gets too bad, it could potentially leak your antifreeze coolant into your engine oil and vice versa, which could damage your engine. So once you are aware that your water pump is indeed going bad, it's best to just go ahead and park the car and get that water pump replaced. 
Now I would like to rant for a minute about this style of water pump. So I've changed numerous water pumps over the years and they're usually fairly simple to change because in the past with most of the cars I've worked on, the water pumps were located on the outside of the engine, which makes it very easy to access. A water pump has an average lifespan of around 100,000 miles. So this means if you have an engine similar to the one shown in this video with an internal water pump, you will more than likely have to tear your engine apart at around 100,000 miles, which seems absolutely ridiculous, especially just for a water pump. Okay, it's now time for me to go. If you like this video, if you could hit that like button and please subscribe and have yourself a great day and I'll see you next time.